Abandon fear and trust yourself Open up to all life's wealth Tap into a sixth sense With intuitive intelligence funny that it's um, oh we're live live the hey. moon is here yes yes so welcome 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 angela's here hi and we're gonna have a really important discussion today um we just got off of a call together and i wanted to give you guys a second to get here and i know angela wants to share this to her community so we're gonna let her do that mm -hmm. it is friday yeah, one alive. 10. Oh. All right, let me quickly send this off. Say hello when you guys get here, whether you're watching from YouTube. We've got we've got one on YouTube. We've got four on Bernadette on, on Facebook on Bernadette Gold. Hi, Jeff. So say hello from YouTube world. Okay. I think say I hello got from it. Facebook world. So me and Angela have done this a couple of times now, which is crazy. But today was even crazier that we we did this. It's a very, I mean, this is a serious topic, but it's some really interesting things happen. So um, can you see the comments? Yes, I can see the comments. So hi, Jeff. Hi, David. Hi, Wendy. Hi, I put Angela's link in the description for any of you that resonate with what we're going to talk about and um you're either within the Hmong community or because she's got a very interesting story and we're going to talk about this as well um what she's here to do with her gifts um but but angela and i've done this now how many times have we done a mediumship reading where you're the translator oh gosh uh two or three times yeah three times three times, three times. Yeah, yeah third yeah. time's a charm yeah. but today so today um we did we did the same thing someone came to her i get how they hear about me through you right through me and and through the, the other owens that was doing the, the other mediumship. families that yeah. we've done um mediumship so i i channel those who've crossed over to help bring the messages to the family very specific messages um to help the family heal and help families move on. That's how I like to use my mediumship abilities um, in the here and now, right? Mm -hmm. I don't do any murder investigations anymore or, or uh, missing persons anymore. It just got way too dark. So Angela and I um, have spoken, she's had her own mediumship reading with me and then she's brought other people to me that don't speak English. They speak, they speak Hmong. So she, here's what I say, she has to translate it. They say what they say, and then she translates it back to English. I mean, the girl is amazing. She's an amazing <laughs> translator. Hi, Kim. <laughs> but today went to this whole other level, which I will share with you, and then we're going to get to the serious matter at hand. <laughs> so we <laughs> I did this. I did this. 90 minute channeling and it started in english but um the person that i was bringing through was mong and what's the language what is it mong is, yeah, is it's the mong. actual it's mong. Yeah, mong um yeah. so i could and and it's it's not chinese but it sounds like chinese right mm -hmm. it's so it's a dial a different dialect, yep, different um, dialect. and very much vowels which yes. very much confuses me. That's how I have a hard time with the Navajo language because it's a lot of vowels, not a lot of con consonants. Mm -hmm. So we're doing this reading and um, she's translating and I am trying really hard to make sense <laughs> of what started out English, but now because the receiving party, the one that was getting the reading was having some skepticism. Mm -hmm. So the one that we were channeling through um, decided to speak his foreign tongue to me and i'm like oh my god <laughs> trying to tell angela it sounds like i feel like i'm playing a game like sounds like and i'm just i'm like i'm having a hard time like this is what it sounds like but it's not quite that and angela's like oh and then she's translating and and then the the person who was receiving the readings like yes and, and i'm like oh my god just speak english but 
he wouldn't. He would not speak English <laughs> because the one getting the reading was skeptical. So it's one way to prove, right? Mm -hmm. Evidential mediumship. One way to prove it mm -hmm. is when you speak in their foreign tongue and you don't speak. Like the only language I speak, a few curse words in Spanish, <laughs> just from living in California and, and working on a farm, but English. Mm -hmm. Like I don't speak, even like I'm Filipino, part Filipino, but I don't, you know, my aunties would talk with their hands like they want you they'd say come here <laughs> like they're trying to grab you. like I don't understand any yeah I mean I was born and raised California and Washington so it's very difficult for me at the age I am to speak someone else's language but oh my god Angela did she's done god one time we had how many people were in the room that one reading oh there's a the whole room filled up I think it was seven or eight people and she's translating yeah from english to mong and back to english again yeah. for me to pass all these messages through to an entire family mm -hmm. <laughs> entire yeah. family all on zoom we're doing these readings yeah yeah so today was just a trip because it's the first time it's happened in a reading where she was translating where the person who crossed over decided to speak in their foreign tongue <laughs> and i'm like oh my god <laughs> she did great if you guys wanted to know she did great she it was good. it was very difficult um and i thought oh my god how am i going to get through this this is it was very difficult and it's very emotional when you lose somebody mm -hmm. you know and and you want proof and and she, she did keep asking for proof yeah, she did. Prove that. I'm like, oh my God, now I got to make sense of what I'm seeing. And it's not even my form, my my traditional food mm -hmm. and trying to describe it. I'm like, an, I'm trying to tell Angela it's like this, but it's not really like this. <laughs> like It's like this, but it's not. <laughs> it's like a game of charades. This is what happens in, and the funny side, but also very interesting side of being a medium. Mm -hmm. um, the sad part about this story which is why I wanted to bring Angela on so we could have this conversation because at the very end, um, the one who crossed over came back and said, tell Angela, she needs to speak about this in her communities. In the Hmong community, in cross-cultural communities living within the US. Now, I don't know how many of you guys realize this, but there is a big disconnect. And I'm gonna let Angela say it in her own words. Um, of what the problems are within the cross cultures when you when you live in America, but your culture is not American mm -hmm. tradition. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Angela. Yeah. So um, I know there's a lot of like other uh, younger newbies. I mean, of my age that may they may not understand this, is, but this is all about like mental health issues, depression, being bullied, don't don't not knowing how to express. And in my language, it's hard to uh, articulate like the actual words, the, the actual meaning, the, the, the word that will actually describe what is said in English down to the T's and the I's so that they totally get it. But in my language, how I would um, translate that is uh, bully as in like, um, how I translate it is that's my language of the best words I can currently think of in describing bully. Uh, mental health as in like uh, you more go there and you you catch it out a um your call uh the mental health that um that 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 we have suppressed in so that those are the things that it's very hard to put into the right words to explain to our our parents our elders to understand because that has been something that has been so suppressed and so shame upon so um not looked in a way where we can freely express it, right? Especially on the woman's side. And now that we're in a better world um, and everything's more freer and women are trying to rise up and our kids are going through this, it's so hard. It's so hard. No one is able to 
help us express it. And I've always wanted to um, find that outlet. And to, I educate, that, yes. to, to educate, to educate the parents, to educate the, the 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 generations. Hi, Beverly. To educate. I mean, the the one the thing that for months that Angela and I have been talking about is how to get her message out there in such a way that because I deal with it a lot within the Indian culture from India. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the Muslim culture mm -hmm. coming to America, and then the Asian culture as well. Angela is one of them that came to me, right? We have these, these cross-cultural things, and it's very difficult when you're raised, especially um, in, in like Hmong tradition or, or say traditional India, um, Eastern, Eastern beliefs are very different than American beliefs. Yes. Very yeah. different, and they, and even in, in, being Filipino Portuguese in, in our family um, for a long time. And, and it's true with lots of families, whether you're Asian, you're Indian, um, a lot of families. And I know even Europeans, you have, you are raised to be strong and stoic. We don't mm -hmm. talk mental health. We don't talk about emotions. We don't talk about suicide. We don't talk about any of just stoic, just mm -hmm. take it. And for hundreds of years from immigrants coming to this country, um, the whole cultural boundary issue has come up. And now women within these cultures like Angela's, what are your traditions? Women are meant to do what? Be quiet. They're not meant to be, uh, you know, the dominant person the ones that uh, take care of the family, the, you know, the one that leads, they're not meant to, for that. They're supposed to be in the kitchen and birthing babies and that's it. And that's a lot of cultures, mm -hmm. except for the Western culture. Mm -hmm. So, and it breeds, it breeds even more of a feeling of entrapment mm -hmm. for women that are abused in those cultures, for men who are overwhelmed, stressed, they're depressed for kids, young people who are anxious mm -hmm. and, and facing mental health issues mm -hmm. because it's not culturally appropriate or acceptable. Yeah. You saying that just remind me because when you were doing the channeling, you kept saying that that channel was sensitive, was sensitive. Right. And uh, when I was I was doing my best to translate that word, right? We don't even have that word in our language if I'm trying to um, find and think if there wasn't, because in, in my brain, I don't, I can't find it. I, I don't even know how to explain what sensitivity is like in our culture because we, there's this shame of being a psychic too, a mediumship too because just like you know the or an empath how do you yeah. how do you describe empath to the i don't even know I, I don't think we even have a word or i need to probably find out what it is but <laughs> it was so hard to translate that to her and i'm like how is she going to understand sensitivity right which and, is such a common word to those yeah. of us in the spiritual communities and in america and even europe the word sensitive, you, you tell someone they're a very sensitive soul or sensitive emotionally, mm -hmm. you know what that, we all know, y'all tell me in the chat room, you know what that means to not even have a word mm -hmm. to describe that. <sighs> what is I that? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's like, wow, you know, just being able to have something to describe that will mean the world to us in some way that will help them uh these these parents these elders know that hey you know they need to give them more support or they need to understand that they can understand them on a whole different level you look know? at what beverly says yeah yeah i mean look you guys i mean because just she talks about this on her channel too when she's hit bottom what do you do when you hit bot? Who do you talk to? I don't really have anybody to talk to. Me. She talks yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. And Kim's saying, wow, the challenges that I never even thought. I know you guys haven't thought about it. Unless mm -hmm. you, hold on, I have to turn off my phone. Um, unless you, you 
I'm getting scam calls. <laughs> <laughs> this, I've been on the phone and reporting these people because Publishers Clearinghouse called me today and said I won $5,000. And right before the reading I did for Angela's friend, um, literally they're calling me trying to get me to pay some fee. And I'm at the same time typing to Publishers Clearinghouse scam alert thing. So sorry. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. <laughs> and then Kelly's saying very familiar with sensitive and pretty much ever every aspect. Right, but mm -hmm. look you guys, like when there's no word in your, your tongue your language to describe it can you there's a whole you guys have no idea like there's an entire humongous millions of people population that don't have a word to describe empathic and empathy mm -hmm. don't have a word what do you use for the word depression um see it's it's a word that uh uh if you say a way in one way, it means differently. If you say it a certain way, it means differently. So it's kind of hard. It's like a lot of words put into one, but it really doesn't explain a whole lot in my of depression. Yeah, hopefully, what depression means, right? So your culture, culturally, you guys don't traditionally not you guys, but traditionally, it's not something that was discussed then. No, nope. it wasn't something that it was, was never discussed. So what I mean, do you do? What did you do the first time you experienced anxiety, depression, and and thoughts of 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 wanting to end it? What do you? Who, how do you express that? Who do you express it to if there's no words? Um, thinking of me, my story, right? How 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 many times you have helped me? What I did was black and white. That was it. What do you mean? Oh, the black explain and white that part. to them. Yes. <laughs> I did the black and white part where I didn't know who to go to. I either, I, I had that part where it was just two way street. I had to choose this way or that way. There's no you know? middle ground. There's no middle ground. There's nothing for me to settle with, to have a solution with. You either live or you die. Mm -hmm. That and was it. No, there was no middle. Yeah. There's, and there was no words to describe it to no. the people in your culture no words and not just it. your culture i want to be clear on this you guys find that one safe person you have to understand what we're talking about here the subject matter is this cross culture because in other cultures not western american culture not even even british culture there are asian cultures there are other other Muslim cultures, there's other cultures, they do not have words to describe the feelings of oppression, depression, empathy, sadness, suicidal thoughts. There's no language to translate those feelings into words because you don't discuss it. Mm -hmm. You become stoic. You just shoulder it. You yes. want to know why there's such a huge number of suicides in other cultures that come and try to integrate into American culture because they don't have the support system, which is what Angela is here to help people with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To not even have a word to describe sensitive mm -hmm. is it's it blows my mind. But I've worked with her for months now trying to get this to a place where we can talk about it yeah i mean it's a simple thing for us americans we're like oh they're sensitive mm -hmm. they're they're touchy feely how mm -hmm. do you explain that when there's no word in your language to mm -hmm. explain that what do you draw mm -hmm. pictures you know take a doll and poke needles it hurts i mean what do you do i i what i thinking about and looking back of maybe my experiences to other people's you know hearing other people's experiences most likely it was we were thought to be too dramatic, or we were thought to be uh, being too naughty, or, uh, oh, we may have probably needed to be disciplined, right? So you get punished for being hurt. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah, that's, Nothing I else. mean, you, and I want everybody, I want to bring this out because there's a lot of bullying that goes on with other cultures, mm -hmm. whether it's the Spanish and Latino communities, from, from, you know, Americanized cultures, they come to our country, they get bullied. Whether it's Asian cultures, and I experienced it when I was a child, you know, being called really nasty, derogatory names on the playground. And it's hurtful. You don't know you're any different. Mm -hmm. But then when you're raised in a culture like the Hmong culture, I think is a beautiful culture. Their celebrations, their, their, the way they believe, the way they honor the dead, they literally leave them 
food. <laughs> so cute when we were channeling that too. They leave a food for those who've crossed over, even though they don't have a body. You know, it's an honor. They do it for the, the spirit gods as well. They leave food. And I knew that part. I didn't know they did it for the dead. So I get to learn these things when I do mediumship readings. But the problem that's happening across the world mm -hmm. is that we have, America has so many different cultures. And in the home, you live as Hmong. Mm -hmm. But then yes. you step out of your doors into the workplace of America, right? or into school, that's America, and you're experiencing hurt and bullying and, and you're depressed and, and you're angry and you're scared and you're isolated and you're sad, but mm -hmm. then your community, your tradition, going home to tell mom or dad or auntie and uncle, there's not even a vocabulary word given to it. Nope. So what are you told to do? Suck it up. Mm -hmm. Be stoic. Mm -hmm. Keep it to your champion on mm -hmm. man up yes and yeah. then what happens what's the worst case scenario angela angela angela, <laughs> angela. Um, you know thinking of like the past and some of our culture's past many will just stay and live in their depression and they'll that'll be their life or or they will the other thing would be a lot of suicide a lot recently now well not recently maybe a couple years from until now silent suffering turns mm -hmm. to suicide mm -hmm. when there is no outlet and while while angela focuses very much on empowering women the men in the Hmong community and other communities as they awaken to their own sensitivities they have no words no, no one and, and no they're not allowed to talk because they are the providers go to work provide for your family do your job, get good grades. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't care what what culture of Asia you're from, <laughs> whether it's Filipino, Portuguese, well, that's Spanish, um, Chinese, Korean, Thai, Japanese, all Asian cult for whatever damn reason, push their children to be the smartest because they have something to prove. Perform A's. You get in trouble if you don't be the top athlete right it's all about performance based it is never about feelings mm -hmm. yes yes exactly mm -hmm. so this is a good question kim yeah well we <laughs> dig as deep as we can and um, to go find those words and to try to put the puzzle pieces or the puzzle words into to form that whatever feelings and things that we go through otherwise i know that we do have some scholars that are um finding our history right because most of our histories are destroyed destroyed lost, lost and we can't find them or we don't even know where they are and you guys had you know? in your culture you had a, a history with shamanic rituals mm -hmm. traditions yes. traditions and yes. those were stolen from your whole your whole culture your somehow community. some way mm -hmm. which happens through war suppress mm -hmm. it's what yeah. happened to the native americans it's what happened to the hawaiian people it's happened over and over and over again mm -hmm. and i want the, to bring this out to you guys for a purpose like we were going to talk about this on the phone and then um the person that i was doing the reading that had crossed over is like no let people know what's happening to our people to mm -hmm. other people so beverly's asking she's making a very good statement and question Yes, there, there really is isn't. no emotional. You're not allowed to emotionally develop. Mm -mm. Develop what? Suppress, repress. It's, it's been suppressed. It's never been talked about. It's never even dealt with. And living in, I would say, my generation to the next generation um, of after me are just only now talking about it, are only now doing our part on understanding and and trying to find the right ground to work with it but before that it was nothing completely. yeah i mean angela came to me a while ago is how many years now it's been almost two or two something like that yeah, yeah she came to me about two years ago through a 
mutual friend that lived where she lived that it has been a follower of mine and and i've done readings for her in the past that's how angela made the connection mm -hmm. um which it's just amazing how spirit does it but i mean you know we've been talking about this because i have a heart for for those who who feel isolated abandoned alone that can't express their emotions and and i think her work because she's an amazing intuitive aside from being a great translator from mom to english she's amazing at that like i was i was losing my mind and i was trying very hard to just translate you know what i was hearing so he was he was going english and then I was speaking it and she was picking it up, translating it to Hmong. And then finally, apparently he just got tired of it. And he's like, I was speaking my foreign tongue. And I'm like, oh my God, like, wait, it sounds like, <laughs> and I'm trying to pronounce these words, but he was trying to get the point across. Like, this really is me. Mm -hmm. And, and I really want you to understand you couldn't have done anything because you aren't equipped. You weren't equipped. Mm -hmm. And in mm -hmm. the nicest way possible, he and I were trying to transmit this message like you couldn't have saved him because you weren't equipped and you still aren't equipped. That is the other thing I was going to say that um, in our culture, most of the things have been stolen and many of the elders and, you know, my parents, they don't understand about the afterlife. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that um, we we are not we're we are living forever and then our body is just you know gone but we're still here in spirit even and though we buddhist culture yeah buddhist culture and the indian culture um hindu they believe in reincarnation mm -hmm. both hindus and buddhism mm -hmm. um but how different is your your spiritual beliefs in your culture than from those two um I haven't had time to really look at it, but you know, just listening and and, and um, kind of connecting in that way, we are similar in in some way somehow. But I'm pretty much what some of the 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 culture beliefs and stuff like that. I know bits and pieces are missing. Bits and pieces have been lost, and what has been passed down is just limited things. And then, and, so then, without any kind of spiritual beliefs, they end up in westernized religion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fundamental christian religion which then makes it bad and evil yes yes that's the other part yes that's the other battle so it's like it's almost like this puzzle piece that never it's like it starts to get ripped it starts to get pulled and then it comes back and it's like oh my gosh yeah because Weird. angela called me too one of her first calls was like is it wrong <laughs> is it wrong that I have these gifts? Is it wrong? And am I evil that I want to learn? And, and it's like, because in our church, which is mainly Hmong people, but it's Christian, fundamental mm -hmm. Christian, she said, they talk about it like it's, and I had to take her through certain scriptures too, to prove to her, no, yeah. this is what Christ did. Like, it's crazy. And then it just like the colon, the colonizers did stripped every religion and every belief, spiritual belief system from the Indians and, and very many um, Eastern cultures came in and ripped their beliefs away and said, no, you're gonna believe like this. But then there's some traditional historical beliefs and traditions that pull forward into the now. But now we're all confused because our religious texts were stolen, burned and taken away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. All religions take different roads, lead us to the same place, the light. Not all religions, I have to disagree with you on that one. Not all religions lead to the light. A lot of religions lead to dogma mm -hmm. and lead to guilt and shame, which is what has happened within her community and many others. Beverly's mm -hmm. saying, I'm seeing you as a pioneer. Oh. That's what I keep saying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and to cross these, these, like, I really want, even though most of you that follow me are westernized or, or you have very western beliefs, um, and you all speak English, most of you, not all of you. I mean, I still have to, I, you know, I talk to many of you that the English isn't your first language. But to really get this, get very clear, first and foremost, to not have a support system in place within your community 
within your family, within the schools, and, and, and to live two separate lives, one within the household in the tradition, the mm -hmm. other one you're being thrown and cast out into America where there are bullies, where there is things that makes you sad, where there is work stress and bill stress and all kinds of, you know, even medical stress. To not have the words to describe your feelings means you're holding it in and you're just a ticking time bomb. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yes. So what's the hope, Angela? What is it you're here and want to express about this to your community and others that are listening that are, are experiencing this very thing, whether it's Hmong or it's India or it's Muslim? What, what, what's your hope? Well, my hope is that I know that movement is coming or it is here, it's starting, uh, but more of not just me, but many others that will still keep coming out to help to find that outlet, to keep educating, to keep um, finding that 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 piece that will put us together, or you know, help us to understand what was missing and what's still missing. Uh, yes, and what is still missing, and what needs to. It's twenty twenty. How do you not have a word for sensitive and sad? don't know I mean I mean I, I couldn't imagine going through life not being able to say I'm so depressed. I have been I have been like um asking that ever since I knew about my gifts so a very long time and I've been going where's the word you know God where's the word in my language in my tongue where how and now we're trying to find some, but really there hasn't been really much. And it's, I mean, this is Angela's one in a, in a large community that's tr trying and there's many others, but not, not as many as there needs to be. Like I want, I want everyone to understand, like y'all have me and I speak English and you speak English. We have words for things like sadness, depression. I want to kill myself. I can't go on. We have words to describe that feeling of overwhelm they don't have it and many other cultures don't either so when you see these people that are being stoic from other cultures and you think well you know they're fine they're not fine they're dying inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. law i love you law look at yeah right mm -hmm. yeah. sisters unite we yes. want to bring this topic to the fore so that all people, whether you're Hmong or you're Muslim or you're from an Asian community that doesn't have words for your feelings, can find it. Find a way to express it. I love you, La. Love. Okay, look, Beverly's saying I would warn against getting caught up in the dogma of any religion. Ultimately, we all hold of our own answers. I would encourage each of us to take what we need from religions, tap into our own, leave the rest. Yes. But we aren't even talking about religion right now. What we're talking about is simple human mm -hmm. emotions, emotions and mental health. Yes. Can you guys that are American and, and you have language for the word empath and sensitive and sad and depressed, suicidal, anxious, overwhelmed, mm -hmm. right? Do you, can you imagine if you felt what you guys feel on a daily basis as sensitives and empaths, but not have a way to explain it or describe it and being stuck with these feelings and having no way to express it, can you imagine the weight of walking through the world like that? It's the hardest. It is so hard, you know, especially me being a daughter-in-law for my family, my husband's family, and going through that role, that expectation and all that stuff of how much, you know, you know, I'm, I don't want to say burden, but everything that I carry and I go through and experience and I want to express that I can't. I don't know how I'm so overwhelmed, but I don't know how. And and sometimes the words that we say are so limited that it comes out the wrong way, which is not right. So then you don't get support. And I don't get support and I, I can't find the right words to express it in a way that 
doesn't make me look like I'm mean, negative, I'm too much drama, you know, even though I'm not, right? But there isn't that 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 ground for me to to do that. And do you guys have mental health counselors in the Hmong community? Yes. Now I know we do. We do. But not a lot. It's just now coming. Yeah. It's now coming. I, I'm I'm seeing that a lot. The the hard part is I know that many of my generation or the younger generations, yes, must, those that are educated, they know. They know where to do. They know that, okay, there's these groups that are out there. But it's the elders and the parents that we can't find the words to explain to help them understand so that they can help us, the younger. Because more of the younger communities are the ones that are going, the, the ones that can't find the outlet that are you know, committing suicide, are in deep depression, are not knowing what to do, right? And living really miserable lives if they are still here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Terry's yeah. saying, I love this discussion. Oh, I'm you. glad you do, Terry. I think it's very important that we, as a community um, of loving beings, conscious beings, at least I hope that's what you guys are, um, that we hold this topic up in prayer and we support anyone that comes to us and and understand as much as you want them to tell you how you how they feel and offer support they are struggling to find the words because it doesn't exist for them in their language and you can sit there and go well just tell your tell your parent they can't because their parents yeah. it's like telling your parents that you know, the color blue doesn't exist when in fact they know the color blue exists and trying to convince them that the color blue doesn't exist. That's how difficult this is for an entire population. And we have to hold them up because, and, and, and really start to educate. So my hope is this, I love this. Yes, you rock Angela for coming forward and speaking up. <laughs> you know, and it's funny how this topic has keeps coming up because she has been the translator within her community. <laughs> All these people like compiling into her house. She gets on a Zoom call and she's sitting off in the corner with an entire round of people trying to tell them what I'm saying is coming from the one who crossed over. And then they're all bouncing back and she's in the middle. Oh, wait, let me find the words. Like she does amazing work and that isn't her job. Her job. It used your, to be. <laughs> what's your job? <laughs> My job is I'm also, I'm an intuitive empowerment coach. So um, I do similar work to Bernadette. Yes. Yeah. And she helps women with fertility. Mm -hmm. Yes. She supports yeah. people who, who especially that do this cross-cultural thing and oh, are struggling yes. alone. Like mm -hmm. that's her calling. I feel like I'm just going to say what I feel. I don't care what she's, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like I've always told her, like you have this calling to be able to be a bridge in your community and with others that have similar cultures to be a bridge and, and to, to hold sacred space and holy space for, for them to get the outlet, to, okay. to find the help that they need to understand their spirituality, to understand their emotional, mental well-being. Like she's a beautiful bridge or tower in a desolate place. Mm -hmm. And the work you do, I think is amazing. So if any of you have that issue, she understands it because she lives it. Yes, I live it. And it's, it's, not, it's not simple but mm -hmm. it's, I'm getting there. <laughs> she is getting there. She is. Um, and I think that, that if there's anything we can do for those who are going mm -hmm. through those things is refer them to the people that can help them. And truly, like I've worked with Angela long enough to know and recommend, like she is one of the few people um, that I let post into my group, the article she writes, because she has an amazing story too. Um, Angela had cancer. How long ago? It wasn't even that long ago. Two, two years. Mm -hmm. Exactly two years. She went through oh cancer um, yeah. and had to suffer. And I mean this when I say this, you guys. Suffer with her fear, her questioning, her mm -hmm. doubt of wanting to live. Yes. Alone. Because there's no words in her culture and language to describe those 
feelings you go through mm -hmm. when you have cancer. She yeah. was even in cancer expected to take care of the kids, be a good mother-in-law, and continue the big stoic fight. Mm -hmm. and there mm -hmm. are other millions like her in the same type of culture, if not the same culture, yes. that have to suffer alone. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessary. That's why I want to introduce you all to, hi, this is Angela. Her link is in the description. Hi. <laughs> and she understands it on a very personal level from yes. cancer to fertility and infertility mm -hmm. to losing people left and right to suicide. Yes gang violence to ridiculous beatings because a woman is too afraid in her culture to leave because her family won't support it and will reject yes. her. Mm -hmm. There's so many things she can help with and I want her to be out amongst all of you um, in case you know someone who's going through that and you're like, I don't understand it. She understands it because she lives it now still. To this day, she's lucky she has me. I'm lucky I have her yeah. because I get to then, you know, it does when I talk to her and, and her family and her people, it helps me understand when I'm talking to my other people that aren't Hmong um, and in being patient with what they're going through mm -hmm. um, and understanding that, yes, there is this huge cultural divide and how confusing is it? You know, because even growing up, me, right? I was born and raised in America. I'm Filipino and Portuguese. We're from Hawaii, right? But I always felt like I'm just me and my skin might be darker. My hair is brown, but I feel white. On my birth certificate, it said Caucasian. Then they start doing these questions. What race are you? I'm Pacific Islander, but my birth certificate says I'm white. Like, so then you don't, you're not like me. I'm not part of the Portuguese or the Filipino community, although I have a ton of family. Like we have a huge family, but I don't feel like, because I don't speak the language that I'm with them, but I also don't feel white. And if you don't understand you guys, like how yep. difficult that is, you yep. don't know which side of the ocean you're supposed, where do I belong? And then you put the spiritual, empathic, you're a psychic, oh my God, and it's against every religion that's fundamental out there. It's like your head wants to explode and you feel completely isolated. So isolated, so out of it, it's like, where do I even start? And then you have problems with wanting to kill yourself because nobody understands. When you don't have anyone to talk to, mm -hmm. when you don't have any way to express or to disconnect or discharge these emotions, that is where everybody goes eventually. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. sometimes, unfortunately, people are successful at it. I know the feeling, lucky at my juncture, I laugh at it, but I understand. It's, mm -hmm. it, we have to laugh, but also cry all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. 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 Angela, you've dealt with and helped people in your community, um, women that are, are going through depression, anxiety, because they can't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And yes. even that, they don't have a word to describe it, do they? No, no. Um, our elders, our parents, they don't understand the, the they don't even have infertility the word for that um um we just have the words that she can't have kids or they can't have kids and how do they look upon you if you can't have kids oh my gosh you get all the ugly stares you get talked about you get um you know you get all these people that don't even ask you for your permission or don't even ask you how you are they just start assuming assuming this, assuming that. They just start giving you things. So some of the hardest things in life, and one of the hardest things for a woman is to not have children when she wants to have children, mm -hmm. right? So she faces infertility or miscarriage or problems health-wise, the hardest parts of life, and there's no words to describe it in your language. How the hell are you supposed to survive? Mm -hmm. And when you go into the like gatherings, you're the talk. So you're, you're bullied. Talk. You're the talk. You either ignore it 
or you leave or you don't even come. Or what, they point at you and sh 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 talk about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And this is, like most people don't know that this is a thing. And I, I really want you guys to understand this is a thing. It is. And and so let's all hold Angela up that she does her work and does it powerfully and that people in all cultures in America or Europe or wherever they are can come to her, book a session with her um, and tell tell everybody how you work. Like, what do you do What when, when someone books a, a private session with you? What is it you offer to them? I do offer. Um spiritual counseling, spiritual mentoring. I offer like psychic readings. I offer intuitive healings. Um, but mental and, and emotional healings. Yeah, mental and emotional healings, yes. And um, and guidance. Guidance, and I'm currently um, offering some uh, Akashic records. She's, yeah, she's yes. doing Akashic record readings too. Yes. Um, so I want you guys to, to, to take note. There is one right now who, against a lot of her family oh, and yeah. her community is still standing up and saying, I don't care. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like it. You don't have to accept it, but I'm going to stand in my truth. And it took a lot for her to get here. So I want you guys to like really send her some love, put them hearts up. Like it took a lot for her to get there where she felt like, okay, I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I was called to do. Yes. Yes. And it's not like she doesn't catch hell for it. <laughs> the journey was hard. The ride was hard. The acceptance, yeah, doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. 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 You're getting hearts from Law. We love you, Law. Oh, I'm so you, glad Ma. that I know you, Law, and that you you somehow in in without even meaning to brought Angela to my doorstep mm -hmm. because I think she's amazing. It sounds like you also offer others in different cultures who offer language and spiritual language. Yeah, I think she does. I think she she is that bridge that can translate on an emotional, mental, and spiritual level to the soul and spirit of that person needing help. Mm -hmm. Exactly what they need to hear, exactly what they need as far as giving it language for them to express. She holds that space. That is, first of all, healing, just to feel heard for once when yes. your culture ignores it. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to be able to give guidance from spirit intuitively, to deliver spiritual food, to heal the heart of the person, to heal the soul, and to give them hope to keep going is unbelievable. Yes, yes. Kim's saying, how do we hold her up? How do we all hold her up? You share this video around so people know that she exists and that this issue exists. And you let people know that she yeah. is available and she is out there um, and she has a website and a Facebook page. What's your website? It's hard to pronounce, huh? Um, can I type it in the comments? You can. Can I or can I? Yeah. No, yes. I think I have to, I'll, I'll, I'll do it on my phone. Here. I don't have it on here. I'll, here, I'll type it. What is it? Oh, okay. My name. And then my last name, X I. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> X I O U. Oh, X I O N G G M O U A dot com. Okay. So I just put that in the comments for you all. Um, that's her website. And yes. if you want to book in with her, book in with her. She does amazing work and she does actually do, like I said, Akasha Gregory. But to be able to talk to someone, just talk to someone privately, confidentially, right? To be able to talk to someone mm -hmm. when you're dealing with this, like, you know, because there are still, I don't know if you guys realize this, there's still some cultures that force arranged marriages on their children that yeah. sell their young girls to be partners to be. Yes, yes. It we exists. used to be. We used to be. But that was. And many those. Years. Girls don't have anyone to talk to or the language for how violated and alone and desperate they feel. Do you have a word for desperate? Maybe. I can't think of it now. Maybe. I'm not pretty sure. I'm not 100% What about needy? Though. Need? Um, need. Need. 
So what I'm thinking is really negative. See, you guys, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. It does. She's searching her brain for yeah. a word that does, they don't have the language, yeah. which is so, I can't even imagine the weight of that, mm -hmm. how alone that feels. And it breaks my flipping heart. And today, for whatever reason, the way that, that this young man came through was, it, <laughs> it's fun. It was funny it and was. not because it was a very serious topic. You guys have to understand this is a very serious topic yeah. and he's trying to give validation in his own language. And I'm trying to pronounce words that I have. I'm like, okay, it sounds like, and Angela's just like, is it this? Is it? I'm like, yes, that's kind of what it sounds like. And she's like, oh, that's what this means. And it was exactly right on the right response to the question the woman was asking. Mm -hmm. So we knew that that was the word, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So there was that validation, but oh my God, it was so difficult. But God yeah, bless yeah. her. She was yeah. able to handle it. I, I, I was very surprised that, that that channel came through with sensitivity, with... Um, being bullied, being looked down upon, being, you know, all those things. I was surprised that that was the case. And I was like, wow, this is a reason why. This was a reason why this happened today. It was, look at what Law's saying. There's a word for desperate, but it's negative and the Hmong yep. language beats around the bush. Yes. There's a lot of cultures that do that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cultures that do just they go around it. They don't they don't ever address it. So you don't feel heard and mm -hmm. you don't feel seen mm -hmm. and you never feel validated and you don't feel loved and supported. Mm -hmm. And that just ah and it leads to unnecessary drug abuse, alcoholism, mm -hmm. and ultimately suicide. Yes. And I cannot tell you guys how touched I was today to be a part of just trying to channel and do a mediumship reading and bring the messages through from a very young person and, and spread the word because it was unnecessary. If he had the language. <sighs> I know. And, and if, if we, we can, if that. we can prevent other young people mm -hmm. that are suffering with the same thing, Mm -hmm. then because even the old people that are feeling it that other generation where they don't understand the elders they start to feel these things the pressures from the western world and life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they don't have language for it either no so they're dedicated mm -hmm. yeah that's right that's totally right what some of our elders are going through too so this is what lillian's asking we don't we don't have a country um our history has been wiped out we don't even know we think that we are from China. Most of our um, isn't it near Mongolia? Are, it's near, but most of our people are in China. Most, you know, the the many thousands of them are in there. But we have so many different dialogue in our culture. So, um, I I think you mean dialects? I mean, yes, dialects, not dialogue. Um, we the ones that are here in america are the southern type that um i think got booted out or got uh, or were able to escape the war to come and then we move we got booted out into the v vietnam laos thailand southeast area so yeah, yeah. that's where most of us and are. even vietnam and laos i mean i know some really wonderful laotians they don't have the words either mm -hmm. to describe mm -hmm. it. Even Vietnam, a war-torn country, they don't have the language or words to describe mm -hmm. how they feel. And this is a country who's been through trauma. Yes. But so has the country that Angela comes from. And to not even know where your roots come from because it was that wiped out. Yes. Is a travesty. It's a yeah. travesty. Yeah. Beverly saying, I can't fully imagine how the lack, how the total lack of language would be so limiting. I know it's heartbreaking. Yes. Thought about Mongolia, but wasn't sure. Going to do some research. This is touching me. I'm so glad you guys are being touched. 
Thank we you. We were rebels refusing to bend. I know. Yep. Law, if you guys don't know, if any of you are from Portland, Law is an amazing entrepreneur and she's an amazing mom cook. Yes. And she has a food cart in Portland that I have yet to get to. I swear I'm coming. I Me too. <laughs> Law, it's called Laws, L A apostrophe S. She's on Facebook, Laws food cart and you can get traditional Hmong food. And it's from what I hear, it's off the charts amazing. Um, and she does organic farming. She raises Hmong chickens. She raises like these amazing chickens and eggs. And so if you guys are near Portland, you ever run through Portland, she has an amazing food cart there. But um, yeah, can't you ask your ancestors? She has, and there is some stuff coming back with this shamanic stuff. Mm -hmm. There is, but it's still limiting very suppressed look you guys it's like someone coming into the reservation or i don't know they did this in christianity too coming in and burning all of your scrolls burning all of your traditional ceremonial stuff burning it it's gone it never existed change your language just like they did the indians mm -hmm. You can ask your ancestors, but then you have to be clear enough as a channel. It's not like they're sitting in the living room with you and they're three dimensional. That's not how mediumship and channeling works. Mm -hmm. It has to come through dreams. But then if you don't have something solid and we all have an ego, you doubt what you're getting. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I do as a psychic, I'm sitting here doing a mediumship writing and I'm like, this is going to sound crazy, Angela, <laughs> but... It sounds like chichier, chichier, <laughs> and but it means oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> like it's hard enough. Like, and then I'm thinking if I say this to them, they're gonna be like, "What in the heck is wrong with this girl?" But then translated, because I don't know the Hmong language, Angela's like, "Yes." So what that means is meet meeting again. What was that one word? Shinji dua or Shinji. So I mean, we will meet again. And I kept hearing like, ching, chi, chi, t, t. I was like, Angela, what does it mean? And the question was, how soon will we see each other again? Mm -hmm. And then that was the answer. It was in Hmong. And I'm like, chi, chi, ding, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what? And she's like, oh. And it was the perfect answer Answer in in her language but I don't speak that language, but somehow he was able to, to get it through. And it had to come in the foreign language to me, it had to come in their tradition so that she would accept it was coming from him. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't speak Hmong. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, I had too many vowels. It doesn't make sense. It's all vowels. There's no consonants in, in English. It's all consonants and vowels mixed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at, I grew up Christian and so fascinated with Hmong shamanism. You and so that's the thing that word shamanism is is like even in Brazil, in indigenous cultures, it's become a dirty word. Yes, it's very shameful in our culture. It's like magic. When mm -hmm. you say magic, then you start you start to think witchcraft. Shamanism is is the same word as witchcraft is in English, right? So it's become like this is the traditional beliefs, and it's not it's not evil what they what they practice in the shamanism. No. But it's because of the Christianization mm -hmm. and Catholicism and Protestantism, they it was it was known as witchcraft and evil, yes. and it was removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, uh, a tonal language, wrong tone, wrong wrong word, and yes, end. yep, that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the educational today was a very educational day for me. And, and it took my mediumship skills to this whole other holy crap level. <laughs> he was teaching you how to speak our language. <laughs> oh, I thank God he didn't speak like Latin because I would have been like, oh my God. But that was bad enough because I've, I don't know that I've been exposed to much Hmong language mm -hmm. in my life. I mean, I lived in, in the middle of nowhere, you know, white America where I was the one Asian, like on the census, it said, you know, 30, 39 or 50%, 60% Caucasian, 20% Native American, 10% Hispanic, one Asian, like one, there was only, and I was the one. <laughs> I was the 
<laughs> like I'm the one. <laughs> it's me. You know, so we didn't have any anything like that in Colorado for the 17, 18 years I lived there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, to 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 be having to give a reading from someone's native tongue, I was like, oh my Yeah, God. I, I was gonna say that, you know, because La said that La was she grew up Christian. I didn't grow up Christian. I grew up shamanism. And but now you're having to go to Christian because you're married because I'm married. So it's like I mesh and clashing. This, yeah. Clashing this. And that's where I started questioning. Like what's what? Where do I believe? Where's my line? There isn't a line. Yeah. And then she got very black and white. Mm -hmm. And thank God she found me because she was like, either I have to live with it in this state of confusion and sadness and desperation and alone or I kill myself. I'm like, no, 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 no. Spirit's like, no, no, there is a middle ground. <laughs> Let's breathe for a minute. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. find the middle ground through the the blending of and integrating. And that unfortunately what she experienced before she found me is not limited to just her. It happens to millions of mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So just answering Lillian's question, my husband was not Christian too. He grew up shamanism. And so this is recent then? This was recent. This change was recent. So, yeah. Unbelievable. It's hard. It's hard. But I understand it now. See, Kina and I were talking. Kina, I love you, Kina. Kina's from um, Sweden. She said, this sounds exciting. I'll have to replay so I can understand what it's all about. Kina and I were talking about this. Um, and, and, you know, I think Lily and I talked about it before too, because Lillian's from the Netherlands. So English is not the, the native language for them. So when we're on Facebook and we're doing live streams or we're doing classes and, and even in comments, you guys have to understand. And I hope all of you will start to take this into consideration. If you have people that you're in groups with or you're friends with on Facebook and their native language is not English, mm -hmm. be patient because when the translation's coming through from their native language to English, sometimes it gets misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there aren't words like Angela's saying to describe what they're trying to comment on. And then there becomes this war when there shouldn't be. Like just be patient and clarify. What do you mean by that? But not from a, what do you mean by that? Don't, never is there an excuse for that. Language barriers are a real thing. Yes. And we need to be patient with one another and love each other and come from that place of how can I help them express themselves? Not how can I prove that they're wrong? That's mm -hmm. stupid. Like, I'm just, no. you think it's fascinating to learn the two and walk between two worlds. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's no different between the spiritual and the physical. I tell you what, law, like it, all of you, like I literally feel like I am straddling the ocean with my little legs and my five foot two body half the time walking through life. I've got one foot in spirit realm and one foot in physical. And it's like both want my full attention. And somehow I have to walk in, in this uneven place. And everyone looks at me and goes, Oh my God, you're, you know, so amazing. And it's so cool to have psychic gifts. No, it was a struggle. It was a struggle because I wasn't allowed to talk about it. It was evil in my Catholic Christian born again household until I finally understood it for myself. No different, it's a horrible place to walk. Hmong Christians hold on to some spiritual beliefs, the concept of reincarnation, even us diehard Christians believe in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, Lillian, that's why I'm always nervous to unmute myself and charm. Don't you ever be afraid to unmute yourself. We all understand and we will always hold you up and love you. Seriously, and I'm not kidding. Like in my group, Burning Gold, if I ever catch anyone slamming someone because they can't communicate the thought and they're being impatient, I will smack you down and kick you out just as quick. I'm just not going to do it. Anki, what does that mean? What does Anki mean? Does that mean thank you? <laughs> I'm just guessing. I mean, I, I'm like become a Hmong person today as far as speaking language. And I'm gonna speak Swedish. I'm just kidding. It was it was so I like got done with it and I literally my mouth was dry. My dad goes, That must have been really stressful. And because he, you know, he'd walk by and I'm still trying. And I actually went extra long on the reading because there was so much translation happening um between Hmong and English and back again. I, I really wanted her to get the answers and get the emotional 
um, peace that she was looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh, Enki is watching. Oh, cool. Um, texting and typing comments. Oh, yes, this is true. Lack tonality and language to add to the confusion. Yeah, that's why people break up too on text and email. It's like, you're stupid. Like, I'm sorry, but that's like this, unless you really just don't care, it's the stupidest, cruelest way to break up with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. We left religion, decided since our beliefs keep changing and we keep changing, we just go with the flow. Well, and some of us have that wonderful supportive life where we actually get to do that but don't feel completely isolated and alone and dejected by our entire community. But I'm going to tell you from where Angela comes from, that's what happens, right? Yep. Yep. You, like it's, it's where you, in our culture, we still have that part where um, you have to choose. There's no middle ground. So black and white. Mm -hmm. No wonder you are such a black and white girl. Mm -hmm. We have to choose. We are either shaman what question? If we were to have ground, it will be like, um, you exist. So that has always been that way. I, I know it's part of moving, coming to the Western world where, you know, they colonize us and they also introduce us the Christian, you know, way. And it has been very hard. You know, I, I, I don't, the, the hard part for me is that I understand this and if I'm uh, if I go out there and say that I have this middle ground I'll be looked at I'm crazy and yeah the the other two are they're here or they're here but they can't bring it together and it's like but what does Buddhism teach middle ground yes. And it's not a religion. See, there's a question for you. Um, I think they do in a way, because I know that um, shamanism is very limited in our culture. It has been limited because our history has been burned. We don't even know everything. Our our elders are, are um, especially the men, you know, they mostly take care or they mostly do the work of the shaman and stuff like that, the rituals and ceremonies. Women can't even touch them unless if they're a shaman or, or stuff like that. But um, they can't even explain to us why they're doing that, how come it's like that. They have only <laughs> told us that, hey, we have always done what we have always done, and we'll just keep doing it. We don't question. Well, I was saying, for example, I know both sides balk at the idea of seeing spirits. I mean, if I tell both sides I see things in my mind's eye, both will think I'm crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> so true. It's true. I mean, you know, it was the way that, that I was raised, too. You know, we went from being Catholic and, and you don't talk about that evil stuff. And then you go um, to the Christians where they're like, now that stuff's just flat out eagle. Beverly is asking, are you first generation Hmong in America? Yes, for my family, I am. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that thing too. Like there's lots of immigrants here. Like 95% of the population in America are immigrants. The Native Americans are the only ones that aren't. <laughs> yes. get it. Like seriously, same with Europe, same with, I mean, every country we're invaded by the Brits mm -hmm. and, and uh, hello, it's just, and then they, their, their beliefs were stripped because mm -hmm. there's only one God and, and yes, there is only one God, but there's many paths and religions and belief systems that lead to the worship of the understanding of the working of that divine God. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd like to see. And that's one of my jobs is to break this stigma that your intuition and your gifts are evil. No, they're not. Mm -hmm. Man did that to control. The church did that to remove the ability for man to go directly and women go directly to God. They removed it. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through them, the middleman. It's no different than the tax man or the car dealership. You don't get to go to the car manufacturer. You got to go to the dealership and pay $10,000 more. Yep. This is what church did to us, people. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the truth. It's just not our culture. It's 
everybody across yeah. the yes. board. Yes. But their culture just doesn't have the language to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring this really interesting topic to the fore publicly, A, so that I can provide a platform for Angela to be able to, to speak what she does um, out to my people, because I have a big following, and I'm going to actually podcast this with your permission oh, yeah. um, oh. so that we can put it out onto Apple and iTunes and, and the podcast universe that we have out there. But, you know, it's very important to me when I have to channel through people who have died unnecessarily from drug overdose or suicide, it hurts my heart. Mm -hmm. And the only reason it went there is because they don't have a way to talk about their feelings or mm -hmm. understand it. To me, that's like, okay, no, we're going to get on the soapbox now. We're going to explain to the rest of the world this is happening. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to lead them to someone who can help them. And if it's not me, which, look, I believe there's enough for all of us. If it's not me, then I'm going to recommend the people and I, that I know that have been through this understand it and can be of assistance, and that would be Angela. So all of you guys, Angela is here to help with and her information's in the description. I'm also going to put it in the description of my podcast. Um, and I highly recommend her. I have worked with her for a couple of years now, enough to understand where her heart is at and the purity of her intention, infertility, depression, wanting to help people and empower them to be their highest selves is what she is all about. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. has that experience of that break in cultures. Mm -hmm. She understands what it feels like to be a woman disempowered and pushed down. But she also understands that whole religious conflict of wanting to be spiritual, but also being from a Christian church. Mm -hmm. So if you know somebody that needs her help, please reach out to her so we can stop this madness and oh, stop yes. this. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This any any awesome. last words, Angela? Um, I just want to say that um, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, the channeler that came through. I didn't know this was going to come through, but this was something that has been and still needs to be talked about, to be looked at, to be dealt with. And um, until we can all find that middle ground, we will continue to keep working at it. Yes. We need each other's help. We need each other's support. We need each other to tell or to share this or to, to explain and tell this to other people because many don't even understand and know that this is going around in each culture. In other cultures, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just the Hmong culture. Like I said, there's the Muslims, there's those that are in from India that are still being forced into um, arranged marriages that that are like, I don't get, you know, that go outside of, if they have the Hindu religion and yet the social structure is still set up hold women down, women that are forced to wear burqas and hide their bodies and they're forced into body shame. They have no way to discuss or have language for mm -hmm. telling people how they feel about that. Like suppression of the emotions is how you make people robots. Mm -hmm. And that is not what we need right now. So we're going to step up, stand up, and we're going to spread the word. Thank you, Angela, for being, being able to be open about all of this as well. I think this is important. And I hope to God People hear this and actually reach yes. out to you because it's needed right now. Yes. So y'all know how to reach me. I mean, BernadetteGold.com. Like, just reach out to me. Find me on Facebook, whatever. If for some reason you don't know how to spell her name and you're like, you had this Angela girl on your podcast or your show. I misspelled it on, on how do I just hit me up. Just email BernadetteGold at Comcast.net. Angela girl, how do I find her? And I will cut and paste her link to you. <laughs> <laughs> However, we need to hook you guys up. Um, for now, she's the only one that I know that can take this topic on from a very strong spiritual perspective. Whether you're suffering with an illness like cancer, like she went through, infertility, what she specializes in as well, and then the depression, the suicide, the bullying. Really, like she's she's the girl and understands it from that perspective. Abandon fear so. and trust yourself. Open up to all life's wealth Tap into a sixth sense With intuitive intelligence